Good afternoon, Wacomico County. Thank you so much for being here, watching at home or watching online, maybe a little later on, thanks to our wonderful, wonderful friends at PAC 14. As you will see, I am joined this afternoon by my amazing department heads and leaders in this county. I ask them once again to be a part of the State of the County Address because we are a united front. You will hear from each of them and they will showcase exactly what has been going on in their department or organization over the last year. In the words of Eileen Betrisky, great leaders are not the best at everything. They find people who are the best at different things and get them on the same team. This last year in office has been one of the most rewarding experiences in my life. We've learned a lot. We overcame challenges, had new experiences, met new people, but most of all, we worked hard every day for the people of Wacomico County and continue to do so. We love coming to work every single day. And when we flip the lights off at night in our office, we ask ourselves, what did we do today to make Wacomico County better for tomorrow. And one of the most important tasks that the executive does is the budget for the county. Our budget will be presented to the County Council on April 16th, 2024. And speaking of our budget, we will first hear from our Director of Finance, Pam Oland, to talk about the financial health of the county as well as our budget highlights. Pam. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, very briefly, we um, we continue to follow GFO a guidelines um, in our practice for adequate and responsible fund balance maintenance relative to state and national peers. As such, our audited fiscal 23 results, uh, which is our year end June 30th, 2023, had an unrestricted fund balance grow by over 14 million dollars. This growth was due primarily to higher collected amounts than budgeted in income tax, investment income and lower than budgeted amounts in most expense categories. These results continue to make our borrowing for long-term capital financially feasible. On October 31st, 2023, the county closed on 4,195,000 in par amount for tax exempt public improvement bonds and $7,645,000 in par amount for federally taxable uh, public <coughs> improvement bonds. The interest rates for these um, go out about six decimals, so I'm going to round. Um, our tax exempt was uh, 4.33 approximately, and our taxable was uh, 5.71 approximately. These bonds will fund projects for the Board of Education, the Salisbury Wacomico Airport, as well as some other uh, departments within the county. And our credit ratings were affirmed during this uh, bond issuance cycle at AA2 by Moody's and AA plus by um, S&P. <clears throat> As uh, the executive stated, we are cur <coughs> currently working on the 2025 budget submission. This will be submitted to the County Council next Tuesday, which is our required de uh, charter deadline. This budget will include funding for our departments to provide critical services to our citizens from both an operating standpoint and funding for needed capital improvements. Right. Well, thank you, Pam, and especially I thank you for being our guardrails in this county. And the county sits in an excellent financial place, and that is because of you and your hard work with your team. So we appreciate you. Over this last year, we have been working on a strategic plan for the county. This began asking each of our departments that report to the executive to prepare a SWOT analysis for their department and identify strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Overall, our strengths include a strong financial position, as you just heard Pam talk about. We have strong uh, transportation infrastructure, including coast-to-coast -coast major road arteries, regional airline service, and a port. We are centered in a region that is nationally known for its outdoor leisure amenities. Our quality of life assets include a rural lifestyle with quick access to municipal services and amenities. And we have a diverse economy and effective executive governance. Our weaknesses included relatively low wealth indicators, a revenue cap that impedes revenue growth, difficulty hiring and retaining employees to a degree due to low salaries to our, uh, compared to, uh, to our neighboring jurisdictions. And volunteerism isn't keeping pace with our needs. The opportunities in the county include water and sewer expansion, 
broadband expansion, expansion to underserved areas, continued airport development, relocation of a terminal downriver for the Port of Salisbury, and lastly, improving relations with the council majority. The threats that are imposed on this county include potential increases in state fees and our taxes, Kerwin Blueprint funding for education, landfill lifespan, inflation, and the continued depletion of public safety professionals, including police, corrections, fire, and EMS. This SWOT analysis provided us the necessary data uh, to create key points of concentration that we refer to as pillars. There were six pillars that were our focus over this last year, and we call them the six pillars of success. Economic development, employee recruitment and retainment, uh, modernization of local government, public safety, education, and creating a more business-friendly county. And these pillars are not only reflected in our budget, but in the decisions that we make daily. The first pillar, economic development. My administration has worked so hard on this pillar. We know how important economic development is for this county, and we are always looking for ways to bring people to Wacomico County to enjoy our amazing uh, county. We have worked very hard in building our relationship with SWED, Salisbury Wacomico Economic Development, and here to talk a little bit more about that relationship and the amazing things going on in the economic development world is none other than Dave Ryan. Thank you, uh, Julia. We appreciate the invitation. And before I begin, I want to thank everybody at the table here. Economic development is a, is a team sport. There's not one individual, there's not one organization that can accomplish all that we want to do or need to do in economic development. So we don't take that partnership lightly over at SWED. So each and every one of you, thank you. I trust we reciprocate. If we don't, it's probably Ashley over there. Don't you try that? <laughs> but let me start by saying, Workforce development and real estate are major drivers of economic development. And in workforce development, our signature program is the establishment of an aviation maintenance technician program at the Salisbury Regional Airport. We're fortunate that we have an airline's headquartered in Wicomico County. We're fortunate that we've been able to retain scheduled airline service in many small communities, unfortunately, have not been able to retain scheduled airline service over many, many years. And the reason we've done that well, the reason there is the maintenance operation. They have other facilities, Albany and Harrisburg and Philadelphia and Roanoke and Richmond and Charlotte and, and Philadelphia. And, and Salisbury is right in the middle. It's like the Olympic rings and the overlap right in Salisbury. And we have a large space there. We have a talented staff. And they have to service those planes. That's why we've maintained service. So to continue to maintain and to grow service, we have to maintain and grow the maintenance operation. And the best way to do that is to start a, a school to train mechanics. It's well documented on the shortage of aviation mechanics over the next 25 or 30 years, and we're doing it. We're teaming with the airlines, teaming with the state of Maryland, the county, and the University of Maryland Eastern Shore, which already has an aviation science degree program, already has a pilot training program, and now an aviation mechanic uh, school. If you put all that together, it's unparalleled uh, anywhere else in a in America. So not only can we grow the scheduled airline service, but maybe, maybe I'll stand back a little bit, yeah. <laughs> um, but we can grow that whole aviation and aeronautics sector and provide great jobs for people right here in this community, and we're doing it. We're scheduled, are still shooting for a fall start. It's a 12-month, very intense program in exchange. Um, you come out of high school and you have a great job for uh, a, long, a long time. Real estate is also a major uh, component of economic development. And the good news is, we, over many years, we've filled our larger industrial spaces in the community. Bad news is, we've filled all of our larger spaces within the community. It's a lot easier to uh, meet prospective uh, demand if you have space available. And so uh, we'll talk more about this as 2024 and 2025 unfolds, but you'll see a large developer enter our market area, and this developer will build on a speculative basis that commercial and industrial space that we really are in lacking in supply. On top of that, we'll start a shovel-ready site program in 2024, and this is taking a large parcel, designing a large facility, 
uh, that can put lots of jobs in and go through that site approval process. That's what takes so long. So if we, if we can mitigate that site approval process, take off 12 to 18 months of the development cycle, and these prospective companies, whether they're coming from within our community expanding or whether they're coming from the outside, then it's just that much quicker to construction, that much quicker to new industries coming to Wicomico, and that much quicker to jobs in, in Wicomico County. We'll see proof of concept with that and as 2024 unfolds as well. So workforce development and real estate are, are major drivers of uh, economic development. We can't control every facet of the economy. Economies are fluid, but we can influence those two major drivers and we're doing it. We're happy to be a partner and uh, happy to be part of the team. Thank you. Dave, thank you so much for those updates. And just to reiterate uh, what Dave Ryan said, it is so exciting to know that just in a short amount of time, Wacomico County will have an aviation maintenance school that is unparalleled to anything else in the United States. And that in itself is just amazing. So continuing with our airport, we are now going to hear from our director of aviation and the airport, Tony Rudy. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I, I can certainly attest to uh, Dave's issue of the partnership here. We've had a good relationship with SWED um, at the airport, including uh, the Aviation Maintenance Technician School, which I won't talk too much about. But um, really improving, expanding airport infrastructure um, continues to be a major focus for the airport, especially over the past year. We've had uh, several major projects that were actually bid and awarded, and construction is either underway or about to begin very shortly. Um, two of our most important projects, you're probably most familiar with the first, is our uh, runway extension, which I'll talk about in a moment. And also our construction of a combination building that will house our snow removal equipment. It'll house our aircraft rescue and firefighting equipment, as well as our um, operations and maintenance personnel and all of their needs and the rest of our equipment that maintains the airport. Um, both of these projects have been uh, slightly delayed, but we expect to break ground um, any time now, um, very soon. Um, but facility improvements, you know, they're, they're greatly needed for our current operational needs and for the future success and uh, future growth of the airport. But those infrastructure needs aren't the only thing we're focusing on. Um, the airport continues to maintain a safe operating environment for both the public and its aeronautical users. It strives to work with our existing partners and explore new opportunities that could attract uh, new industry and broaden our revenue streams and create new jobs for the region. Still, we have some ongoing challenges, though. Um, the pilot shortage you may have heard of, um, that's ongoing uh, throughout the country, and it continues to have a negative impact on airports, especially um, airports in small communities such as ours. Um, we've been lucky to retain um, that air service, though. Um, Piedmont Airlines, they're continuing to take steps to ensure that they're the most competitive regional airline out there um, when it comes to attracting and training and hiring pilots. Um, but Piedmont, as Dave mentioned, they're also struggling uh, with the maintenance side, um, attracting uh, and, and re maintaining those mechanics that are vital to their operation. Um, but with this partnership that SWED has with UMS and Piedmont, working towards that aircraft maintenance technician school. We hope to solve that problem, um, pull from a pool of talented uh, local students, train them, and get them to the point where they can both, you know, either go work for Piedmont or someone else in the region. So we're really excited about that. I want to talk real briefly on the projects we have. Um, the first and foremost is our runway extension. Um, this is a 1,200 foot extension to the main runway at the airport. Um, we are currently awaiting the final environmental permitting from Maryland Department of the Environment. And we expect groundbreaking to begin um, sometime this spring or early summer. And construction will take approximately a year to complete. Over in our airport industrial park, um, we're planning on a sewer extension. This is one of the last pieces of infrastructure that's needed over there. We recently um, brought the city water both to the airport and the industrial park. We brought um, fiber optic broadband to the industrial park. And um, this is one of the last pieces um, that we hope uh, will attract uh, businesses and industry over there. And we expect that project to begin um, in the coming year. 
We have a couple public-private partnerships at the airport. Um, two projects are currently in the works. One is for a new uh, cell phone tower located on the airport. It will greatly enhance uh, cell coverage in and around the airport. Uh, design work is, is continuing uh, currently on that project. And this will not only aid both airport employees and the tenants we have there, but also the, uh, the local public, the people who live around the airport, the people that come to visit the airport. And the lease agreement we have in place, it'll provide an additional revenue stream uh, for us. We also have a new solar farm um, that is currently in the planning stages. There are two facilities that'll be on a 20 acre parcel. And this is a 3.5 megawatt power um, facility that's being planned. Um, it's estimated the airport will save over $600,000 in energy costs and collect over $1.6 million in rent over the life of the project. In addition to that, Wicomico County is going to benefit by having a savings of nearly $8.5 million in electric costs and collecting over $600,000 in payments. Our new snow removal and aircraft rescue firefighting building that I mentioned, um, uh, groundbreaking is expected for that um, hopefully this month. And uh, that project was made possible by uh, CARES Act grant funding. We were also, um, actually it was bid part of that project, we have the rehabilitation of our old terminal building, um, improvements to some of the facilities that Piedmont leases from the airport, and also our air traffic control tower. Um, again, this was CARES grant funded. We're almost completed with, it, with this whole project. It included um, new roofing on the buildings, waterproofing, um, parking lot rehabilitation, and other improvements to these um, aging facilities. We have a natural gas line extension uh, that's bringing natural gas to the airport um, that is just about being finished up and um, that'll provide uh, new service to existing airport facilities as well as um, having a, a reliable energy source um, for new development at the airport. And our new uh, snow removal and ARF building will be the first building to come online with this natural gas. So those are some of the projects. A couple other things we have going on um, are aircraft rescue and firefighting, the services we provide at the airport. Um, these are required by the FAA because we have commercial service um, aircraft coming into the airport. And uh, the airport has recently hired new staff to take that over from a current contract we have. Um, we're working to fully train these employees in those, in those duties, as well as airport operational and maintenance responsibilities. And this gives the airport um, greater flexibility um, to use these personnel. Um, it'll give, um, it'll have, we'll have county employees at the airport for many more hours than we've had in the past. And it also provides for cost savings as well. Um, air service development <coughs> remains a focus of the airport too, and we're looking, we're exploring um, options um, we have, you know, even though these are pretty challenging times for air service in general. Um, terminal building improvements, I did not mention this in our projects, but um, we, um, we've been working on, slowly over the years, we've been working on just bringing the terminal, um, um, refreshing it a bit. We've recently installed new flooring. We have a new seating on order, um, and we're going to be uh, doing painting here very shortly uh, towards the end of the month. We also have a new food vending service um, options at the airport, both before and after the checkpoint, so it's easy to, to uh, grab, a, grab a quick lunch, um, some healthy food options for you uh, before you get on that flight or if you're waiting for a passenger to show up. And we also have some future um, improvements to our public parking lots and our rental car lots that we'll be working on here. And lastly is construction of a new aviation uh, fuel farm facility. We hope to break ground uh, within the next month or so. And this will replace an aging facility that's currently underground storage tanks that are over 35 years old. It'll enable the airport to have an uninterrupted supply of fuel for our aircraft operators. And lastly, I just want to thank everyone and appreciate their patience as you know they navigate through all this construction on the airport, but we really look forward to having these projects completed and, and really modernizing the airport. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. And we really look forward to seeing your vision for the airport continue into uh, reality. So we know the airport is an economic jewel and we do everything to support it. So thank you so much. So moving on to the second pillar. Second pillar was employee recruitment and retention. And very early on after being sworn in, we noticed that our employees many times were not being recognized, not being noticed, 
sometimes left out of things completely. And we even had some express their frustration about the lack of appreciation. And we want you all to know we heard you. And we have worked very hard over this last year to make Wacomico County a great place to work. You are not forgotten. Your work does not go unnoticed. And there is no one better to reiterate this than our amazing Director of Human Resources, Donna O'Hara. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak today. Uh, echoing my feelings from last year when I was about a month in, <laughs> but I still feel the same way. I'm very honored to be serving as the Director of Human Resources for the county, and I'm extremely proud of the work that the HR team has done over the last year. Our HR department of six has worked cohesively to serve over 1,200 full-time, part-time, and seasonal employees in addition to our many retirees and all of the candidates who apply for employment with the county. So to you I know is watching my team, thank you so much. I can't do it without you, and I look forward to coming to work every day because of you. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, we have added seven new job fairs to our annual recru recruiting plan. In addition to hosting our own for the first time in several years, we will continue to do those at least once or twice a year, or maybe more. Um, <clears throat> these efforts resulted in direct in-person contact with over 300 job candidates, and we are continuously seeking out other opportunities. We have completely revamped our marketing visuals and added video messaging, and we continuously update those as well. We have made cumulative over uh, half a million impressions in our recruiting and social media platforms in the last year. The county received both the Training Service Award and the Risk Management Award serv Services Award from Legit, which is our legal risk management um, provider uh, that showcases the efforts of our risk management team and the strong work of our HR team. In, the 12, in 12 of our departments, turnover is down. Three departments had no turnover at all. And in seven departments, there was less than a 5% turnover, which is much improvement over the past. <clears throat> we oriented over and onboarded over 150 full-time new hires in the calendar year of 2023. And that's just full-timers. It doesn't count all the part-timers. <clears throat> Uh, as far as some of our benefits and those highlights, 40, over 40% 40 of our employees are currently taking advantage of our deferred compensation program to lower their taxable income. And we have goals to educate those who are not currently participating and not enrolled uh, to help increase that number. Our 457 plan remains <clears throat> extremely competitive in investments and fee structures to assist in retirement planning. We brought back benefits days and had a fantastic turnout. We will continue to provide this each year pre-open enrollment to educate our employees on what, a, what is available to them and providing them the opportunity to meet one-on-one -on -one and in person with our vendors. We are also reintroducing wellness activities and programs in 2024, such as mindfulness, yoga, uh, stress reduction, leadership skills. Uh, there's a whole host of things um, all the way through. Uh, we're going to be having vision clinics right here at different county facilities so that people don't have to leave work. They can come right to corrections in one of their rooms or right here in council, and they can get an eye exam in their glasses in the same day um, and have it well, get them ordered and get everything checked out and be able to leave and not have to go and make an appointment outside of work, so that's exciting. Um, one of the big accomplishments we made this year was adding military service credit for up to five years of service for all employees in the county, not just those in law enforcement. So we're excited about that. <clears throat> uh, we also decreased our high cost members in our Blue Cross Blue Shield program and saved over $7.5 million in in-network discounts from February 2023 to January 2024. Our employees continue to take advantage of the preventative health screenings uh, at a higher rate than Blue Cross's total book of business. Preventative mammography, we take that advantage of that at a 7% higher rate. Cervical cancer screening at a 2% higher rate, cholesterol screening at a 20% higher rate than the average um, than their average book of business. Prostate cancer screening, we are 14% above the average. Well child, well or well adult care, we are taking advantage of that at 16% higher and well child at 9%. So we will continue to hopefully increase those numbers, but our team is doing a great job at educating people and being preventative in their health care. We reduced our unemployment payouts by 92% from the third quarter of 2022 to the third quarter of 2023, resulting in uh, almost $32,000 in unemployment credit. 
<clears throat> we reduced our workers' compensation claims from uh, up by 42%, and we hosted workers' compensation training actually last week for all of our staff that handle those claims to continue to help um, expedite those processes. Uh, for those that, are, that do the reporting within each department. We had over 50 people last week in that training and we'll continue to train new people in those positions so that we do a good job in that area. <clears throat> In the last 12 months, almost 200 county employees received training in some area related to their job duties with the county, and more trainings are planned for the year to come. This month, we are hosting a reasonable suspicion training for all managers and supervisors in light of the new cannabis legislation, and we'll continue to offer the training to the new staff throughout the year. In addition, we have four members of our leadership level staff attending the National Association for Counties um, High Performance Leadership Academy, and they this is <clears throat> going to be offered uh, two more times a year, so we're hoping to get all of our leaders trained in that that um, haven't already been through it, uh, and supervisors, managers, anyone who's interested as the budget allows. Our new personnel manual rough draft is complete and is hopefully will be approved by council uh, with hopefully by the new calendar year. Um, so we're working through that with council. And we are in the middle of the 2024 CBA negotiations. And from what I can tell, this is my, my first time through it. The process has been going very smoothly and has very much been a collaborative and cohesive positive experience, which we, I think we will hear a little bit more about later. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Donna. And I appreciate you and your HR team and the team that you have built. Um, you are a terrific leader. And I just cannot thank you enough for all that you've done um, this last year. Well, just over a year now. <laughs> So then moving on to our third pillar, modernization of local government. Over the last year, we have made many decisions to help move us forward as a county, as well as making governmental services more accessible. One of our biggest purchases over this last year was the purchase of the Verizon building on Mount Hermon Road. This building will eventually become the new home for our Wacomico County Health Department. The building sits right off Route 50, already is located on a road with public transportation, and most importantly, has 250 parking spots. So this will house all of the various services the health department offers, making it more convenient for our community and our residents. And it does not end there. We are always continuously looking for opportunities for us to improve how we do business here in Wacomico County. And another department that has also done so much for modernization and helping our community is our local management board. From laptops to grants to food boxes, our LMB does it all. And I will now turn it over to Tim Bosman, the head of our local management board. Thank you. It's a privilege to be here today. One of the most common questions we hear is what is a local management board? So hopefully today I can give you a little bit of information and some of the tremendous work that we've accomplished throughout the year. So there are local management boards in each county across the state, including Baltimore City. The purpose of the local management boards is to identify priorities and target resources for the community. Local management boards increase local authority to plan, implement, and monitor children and family services. The mission of the Wicomico County Local Management Board, and we're also referred to as the Wicomico Partnership for Families and Children, is to bring together our diverse community to support children, youth, and families as they pursue their goals. Local management boards are charged with conducting community needs assessments every three to five years in order to assess, uh, assess the gaps and needs in the county as it relates to children and families. The Wicomico LMB completed its most recent assessment in October of this past year. From that assessment, our board of directors, along with a guiding coalition and staff, adopted a new three-year plan or what we refer to as a collective agenda. The agenda identifies three priorities for the LMB to focus its work on, which are increasing community awareness and access to a coordinated system of support, addressing multi-generational poverty, and to expand community-based programs and innovative approaches for child well-being. We are able to address the priorities through the various programs and services that we support and fund to agencies across the county. The agencies consist of government departments, such as the health department, to local nonprofit organizations, such as Lead for Life. To give you an idea of what our programs have accomplished over the last year, I would like to highlight a couple of our programs. 
um, as our ex county executive mentioned, our laptop grant, the Connected Devices Program. This grant, in partnership with the library and University of Maryland Extension Office, has allowed us to distribute 750 laptops to eligible households across Wicomico County. The laptops are able to help these households access the internet and help gap the digital divide. Reducing the Childhood Hunger Grant. Under this program, we have distributed 550 food boxes to families in Wicomico County in partnership with Wicomico County Public Schools. This program began in December of 2023, and by the end of the fiscal year, we will have distributed over 1,000 boxes. Along with the food boxes, we have produced four cooking instructional videos for families to watch, and we will be producing three more before the end of this fiscal year. Performance Incentive Grant Fund. Uh, this program helps provide GED instruction to inmates at the Wicomico County Detention Center, along with reentry services. To date, um, three inmates have been able to attain their high school diploma prior to being released from incarceration. Um, we've also been able to introduce the Gatekeeper Program to the inmates that helps them plan for the future after being released from incarceration. Um, our Early Childhood ACEs Grant. This program allows for the assessment and intervention services for children that have been affected by adverse childhood experiences. Um, currently, 21 children have been referred for an assessment and 16 of those are now receiving treatment to help mitigate the harms of the adverse childhood experiences. Our Youth Skills and Workforce Development Planning Grant. Um, this program helps provide youth between the ages of 14 to 24 residing in the county with comprehensive career planning support. And um, to date for this year, um, this has helped 21 youth in that age range. Um, our financial literacy grant was new this year, but this program provides financial literacy education to middle school and high school age students who are living in poverty. Um, currently 641 students have participated in this program. And then finally, our homeless youth services grant. This program focuses on providing a community safe haven for youth in Wicomico County, specifically homeless youth to receive resource navigation and initial case management services. And um, as currently 26 youth have been served by this program. Additionally, the LMB remains active on several advisory boards, committees for child services agencies such as social services and the Wicomico Early Childhood Learning Council. The LMB has attended numerous community events during the year and will be hosting the second annual Children's Mental Health Fair on May 10th from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the City Park. Um, we host this event in partnership with the Wicomico County Public Schools and the City of Salisbury. This year, a new component is being added to the <coughs> fair with the Erase the Stigma Walk and Run. There will be several vendors in attendance to help provide resources to help support children's mental health and well-being. And the fair will also provide carnival-style activities and games for children to participate in. And we hope to see you there. Thank you. Hi, right, Tim. Thank you so much for you and your staff and all the hard work and dedication to this community. And I know that there are so many members of our community that utilize the local management board. And so we look forward to see what the future holds. And continuing on this same theme of moving our communities forward and bettering our county, we will now hear from our head of Rec Parks and Tourism, Steve Miller. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Steve Miller, the Director of Recreation, Parks, and Tourism for Wicomico County. Um, some of you may know this, but our department is structured into four divisions. We have Recreation, Parks, Tourism, and the Civic Center. And the central part of our mission as far as the department is quality of life. And that's why we as a department exist, is to try to make uh, people's lives better and more fulfilling. And that's a beautiful thing and um, an exciting mission. So what I'd like to do is just highlight um, a few of the things that we've accomplished over the past year that improves quality of life uh, for the, the folks of this county. And then also touch on some of the things that we hope to advance forward um, in the coming months, uh, which will also enhance quality of life. Um, over the past year, we've made a number of major strides in capital projects um, at or <clears throat> Uh, very near the top of the list or at the top of the list is the opening of the courts at Harmon Field, uh, which has completely revitalized that park. Uh, it included the construction of 12 pickleball courts, two basketball courts, playground, and other improvements. And if you ever drive by Harmon Field, um, almost at any time of day, there's a lot of activity, and it's been a super exciting project that's been overwhelming, quite honestly, with how well that's been received by the public. Um, this past week, we opened the permanent restrooms at the facility, so that project is now 100% complete and, again, has been very, very well received. Uh, this past year, we also opened up Phase 1 at Pirate's Wharf, which was a project uh, over five years in the making. So. Uh, folks can go out to Pirate's Wharf. There's over two miles now of new walking trails at the park. 
Um, there is a beautiful uh, playground and pavilion with uh, just amazing views of the Wakamaka River, and we're excited to advance that project forward into phase two, which will be a lot of the waterfront uh, portions of that project. So that's been uh, a major accomplishment. Uh, we also invested over $700,000 of improvements at Billie Jean Jackson Park, which is, again, one of our more highly used uh, facilities. That included brand new lights on all the courts and all the fields at the park, and we also installed new irrigation to improve the playing conditions, uh, which were not really up to par, and we're, we're making investments to improve the playing conditions for all the youth that participate in programs at the park. Uh, we continue to make major improvements at the Civic Center. Over this past year, we installed four new brand, uh, brand new video boards in our arena. That makes the arena uh, a better place to, to experience an event. Um, and we also replaced the escalators, which were original to the building uh, after it was rebuilt in the late 1970s. So that was a much needed improvement at the Civic Center. Uh, one of our other most heavily used parks is Pemberton Park, and one of the issues, if you've ever been out to Pemberton for events, is that driveway has been a real issue with potholes, and uh, it's been a problem for over 30 years, and we were able to address that um, and, and re completely redo that driveway to make that park much more accessible. I do want to thank our public works team, specifically the, the team at Rhodes, who helped us uh, get that solution, but it's made that park a uh, more accessible park and a better experience for folks that visit. Um, besides the capital improvements, uh, we've made many strides there. We also continue to make many improvements with program offerings and the, the things we offer for people to do. Um, I can't mention uh, all. I just will scratch the surface. We literally will have programs and events 363 days out of the year. Uh, it's probably one or two days where we don't have something going on. But I'll just highlight just with a few of the different types of offerings. Uh, to give you a flavor. Uh, one is our Challenger Little League program. That's a program we started a few years back that offers uh, the opportunity for folks with disabilities to play the great sport of baseball. Um, I'm happy to report that this year we have 71 Challenger athletes participating, which is by far our highest number. Uh, so excited to have this Saturday will be opening day. We invite the public to come out and enjoy that. It's really a uh, inspiring day to see the not only the challenger athletes but the community of volunteers rally around them to give them opportunities like everybody else. Uh, this past Christmas we hosted our 41st year of the Governor's Challenge High School Basketball Tournament. Uh, that event now is the largest holiday uh, basketball, high school basketball tournament in the United States and it has grown to the point not just in the volume of teams but in its prestige um, it's grown to the point where now it's normal to see in the Governor's Challenge future NBA first-round draft picks. Um, if, if anybody watched the Men's College Basketball National Championship this past Monday, arguably the best player on the floor for the national two-time national champion UConn Huskies was a young man who played in our event. And that's becoming a common thing, that we're seeing NBA-level uh, type talent come to Salisbury, and we're attracting teams from all over the country, including the number three ranked team in the country who flew here uh, this past winter. And that's, that's an exciting thing, both from the experience of our locals, but also for economic development, hotels, restaurants, and all the rest. Uh, we've recently partnered with Salisbury University um, and the city of Salisbury to offer a new youth flag football program that, in its first year, includes over 140 youth participants. So that's an exciting thing. Uh, the Civic Center continues to stay busy with all sorts of events. We had Chefs for Habitat. Um, we just had a sellout concert for a stand-up comedian. And I could go on and on about the events there, but we're certainly proud of uh, the events, uh, both civic community events that happen at the Civic Center. Um, and lastly, I'll just touch on a few things that we hope to advance in the immediate future here over the next year. We have a number of things on the docket. Um, we had over $28 million of projects, uh, project improvements at Purdue Stadium uh, home of the Del Delmarva Shorebirds, recently approved through the Maryland Stadium Authority, which ensures compliance with professional development league standards uh, that's been required by Major League Baseball and the practical impact of that is we hope that that will keep an Orioles-affiliated franchise in Salisbury for the next generation. So very excited to see those improvements uh, begin this fall uh, and go on over the next year to two. Uh, we have a $7 million project at the Civic Center uh, which will enhance uh, some of the exterior parts of the Civic Center, make it a more attractive and um, safer venue. And we're in the very end uh, phases of design there, and we hope to bid that out this spring and, and begin construction this summer or this fall. Uh, I mentioned the Phase two development at Pirate's Wharf. We'll continue to push that forward. Uh, we have a project in design uh, for expansion of our Cove, uh, Cove Road Beach property. 
Uh, so that's an exciting project. We're replacing the roof at the Civic Center. I mentioned the escalators, but the roof is also original, and that's been desperately needed. And so we'll be replacing the roof at the Civic Center. Um, we're looking at a dog park project uh, on the north end of town. I've got some friends here who attended that meeting um, at Leonard's Mill Park. Um, and that will allow locals to have a dog park option on the north end of the county, but also uh, be an asset being adjacent to our visitor center for uh, the pet laden travelers that are coming through the county. We'll give them a place to stop and hopefully hear about all the great things that we have in the county to offer. And a number of other local projects that, again, enhance quality of life, a project at the Mason Dixon complex in Delmar. Uh, we have some funding to do some improvements at uh, Cedar Hill Marina in Nanticoke Harbor. Uh, we have a playground project out over at Adkins Mill, which we're excited about this coming year. We have a fishing pier project at with Tipkin Boat Ramp. Um, and the list goes on and on and on. But I'm um, very excited about all these individual projects, but, but them as a whole. Uh, to really advance the county forward and to, again, offer quality of life improvements. Um, I would just, uh, my last comment here, as Donna mentioned, um, I want to mention the staff. The things that I mentioned, and again, I'm, I'm scratching the surface of the things that we do. Um, none of these things happen by accident. Um, they don't happen by luck. Uh, it takes a lot of really good people who work really hard, and that's what we have in our department and throughout the county. And we're, we're proud of our people uh, who who work hard and care a lot and uh, make these things happen. And I want to thank the executive uh, for her support of all these initiatives and also for the opportunity to speak today. Thank you. No, thank you, Steve. You and your department cover the entire county. And so we could not be more grateful for your energy and your organization and your passion to make Wacomico County the best county, not just here on the shore, but in the state of Maryland. So thank you for everything. So besides LMB and Rec and Parks and Tourism, we have also been making a lot of progress in our Public Works Department. Last year's session in Annapolis, we passed our very first piece of legislation of forming a sanitary district as the foundation for a water and sewer master plan. So the water and sewer master plan in a study conducted by the engineering uh, firm GMB with the help of local leaders and realtors and business owners was accepted by the County Council per resolution 120-2021 in November of 21, right before I took office. The plan represents a long range strategic vision and action plan uh, for the county to provide public water and sewer uh, services to promote public health, quality of life, environmental protection, and economic enhancement, and potential growth for our Wacomico uh, citizens residing outside municipalities in accordance with the county's comprehensive plan. The implementation of the plan is still a top priority of my administration. The county has renewed its contract with Amanda Pollock from the Center of Watershed Protection as the quarterback of this plan implementation. We have secured funding for two preliminary engineering reports and we are ecstatic at the progress that we have made. And we will continue this process, keeping the health of our citizens and protecting our environment a top initiatives moving forward. And staying on the topic of public works, I will now turn it over to our Deputy Director of Public Works, Mike Swaby for an update. Thanks, Julia. I'm pleased to be able to join this group today. <clears throat> Good afternoon. My name is Mike Swaby. This coming April 16th, Tuesday, will officially mark four months since I was confirmed as Deputy Director of Public Works for Wicomico County. Though I will assume very little credit for what has been accomplished by the department due to my short tenure in this capacity, I can tell you that after four months on the job, I'm excited about the department's future and the progress it continues to forge in serving the best interest of the residents of Wicomico County. In my capacity as Deputy Director, I have full general management responsibility for three county divisions. Those are roads, solid waste, and engineering. The roads division employs a workforce of approximately 50 in full and part-time capacities and is responsible for paving and draining drainage in and around approximately 700 miles of roads, nine dams, 26 bridges, two ferries, approximately 32,000 feet of sidewalk and guardrail, four railroad crossings, and many other elements of infrastructure within the county limits. Though it seems it has been scarcely needed as of late, the division is also fully responsible for snow removal. The division's challenge is to provide and maintain a safe and efficient transportation network to support economic development for an estimated 40,000 travelers each day while protecting Wicomico County's beautiful and unique environment. Many people don't realize it, but a travel experience on any roadway is comprised of pavement conditions, signage, striping, traffic signaling, 
lighting, landscaping, and the present visual condition of the right-of-way corridor. These are all attributes of the road system that must be routinely maintained, repaired, swept, painted, mowed, and policed for litter collection. The roads division supported by approximately 50 people who operate and maintain over 200 pieces of equipment, including commercial grade mowers, grade awls, dozers, excavators, and the like, and various portable automated and hand tools to accomplish this critical mission. Notwithstanding the funding of roadway maintenance and construction, the greatest challenge of the roads division is to win the, ra the race against roadside litter. Staff from both the City of Salisbury and Wicomico County have teamed up and made great strides, harnessing the power of volunteers both in terms of collecting litter and organizing litter collection events. The Roads Division does both actual policing and pickup as well as collection from events. The success the county has had with this type of effort is tantamount to sustaining highway safety and maintaining economic development. Since 2021, the county's recycling coordinator has organized and or participated in 27 volunteer cleanup efforts, gathering nearly 28 tons of roadside trash. In terms of density sought in everyday landfill operations, this equates to filling up the average high school gym from floor to ceiling with roadside trash. Going forward, in order to maintain an attractive and clean roadside landscape, an informal partnership formed by the county and the city will continue to progress, will continue progress it has made with harnessing volunteers and organizing cleanups and further begin to identify and attempt to implement solutions to combat litter on a more comprehensive scale, including efforts in the areas of grade school education, legislative reform, and maintaining an organizational support structure to enable and even recognize individual and group volunteers that are willing to clean up our roadways. Beginning in FY25, the county's network of roads will undergo a paving quality evaluation, providing a pavement distressed and condition score for each road segment, including multiple budget scenario analyses and recommended multi-year maintenance and rehab strategies for the roads. Proceeding with this plan will create both a figurative and literal roadmap to maintain the highest quality road system possible for years to come while being able to intelligently manage the financing of the ongoing effort, achieving the best longevity available for every paving solution we employ. Another viable and highly critical function of Wicomico County's infrastructure is the Newland Park landfill and solid waste disposal operation located at 6948 Brick Kiln Road. The landfill is a 125-acre facility that includes multiple operational buildings necessary to support the disposal of solid waste and diversion of selected items to the recycling chain. The facility processed approximately 152,000 tons of waste and sludge in calendar year 23. In FY23, approximately 50 employees operated 85 pieces of equipment in disposing of this tonnage, an operating effort that cost approximately $9.8 million and left an unrestricted fund balance of just over $6.6 .6 million. A land asset critical to the county's landfill operations is the Connolly Mill Borrow Pit located in Delmar. In calendar year 23, solid waste staff and contractors ha hauled nearly 40,000 tons of dirt and clay from this location to the landfill for use as overnight cover and in interim cap and closure media. The county executive team is currently working with council to evaluate purchasing additional property to be used as a borrow pit that is located much closer to the landfill, thus minimizing and virtually eliminating transportation costs of this vital resource. In keeping on the cutting edge of landfill management, the solid waste half st staff harnesses methane gas emissions that naturally result from landfill operations and sells them as a commodity to an energy services company named Ingenco. Ingenco utilizes the combustion properties of methane gas to power turbines and generate electricity for Delmarva at an on-site conversion facility located at the northeast camp corner of the landfill. During FY23, the county earned net proceeds of approximately $60,000 from this ESCO agreement with Ingenco that has no direct costs associated with it. The only cost the county bears from the methane gas system is those that are driven by operational restrictions and reporting requirements levied by the EPA and MDE regulations, the observance of which are compulsory. 
Recycling is a vitally important component of any solid waste disposal operation. Such is the case at the Newland Park facility. While coordinating volunteer efforts for litter collection, as previously mentioned, our recycling coordinator conducts a vigorous ongoing schedule of tours and classroom education program in an effort to change the behavior that originates when someone decides to discard refuse as litter, instead of properly disposing of it at the landfill or through the county's recycling program. Teaching rudimentary grassroots environmental consciousness and recycling concepts, along with conducting landfill tours, constitutes the only education program of its kind on Eastern Shore. In the past five and a half years, dozens of tours and education sessions have been given to grade schools like Fruitland Intermediate, Pemberton Elementary, Glen Avenue, Prince Street, and Westside Primary. In addition, more than 40 tours and corresponding speaking sessions have been given to Salisbury University Environmental Studies students. Based on the calendar year 2023 tonnage rate of disposal, meeting the remaining permitted capacity of the landfill is likely to occur in the next two and a half to three years, creating an imminent challenge that's driving the need for the best possible recycling diversion and further permitting for expansion of cell design and construction. Efforts are underway to renew the 10-year comprehensive waste management plan, which will be driven by compliance with the county's overall comprehensive plan, and will formulate plans and capacity for providing efficient and environmentally sound management and disposal of all waste materials generated within the county. This plan will show how a solid waste collection system will continue to be provided with emphasis on convenience for both recyclables and solid waste that will minimize adverse effects on the environment and remain in conformance with all state, federal, and local regulations. The county's four-person engineering division Garner's unique collection of skills and continuity that serves both the Public Works Department in Landfill Operations and the Road Division, but also within and among the county's other departments such as Planning and Zoning, Recreation and Parks, the Sheriff's Office, the Civic Center, and Corrections as well. Stormwater Management Review and Guidance, Land Evaluation, and Geotechnical Support and Reporting, as well as regulatory support for the entire county are some of just the, the few professional services offered and conducted by the engineering division in the best interest of the county. The skill sets applied by this group is well-rounded and comprehensive in terms of the county's needs and includes such recent achievements as reviewing 70 plus stormwater plan documents and granting the appropriate permits for these plans over the past year assisting with the legislative process and successfully creating a sanitary sewer district that the county executive referred to moments ago, effective October 2023, that's currently in the preliminary engineering report phase. Providing reporting and training on the municipal separate storm sewer system, also known as the MS4 program, for three county divisions, as well as providing troubleshooting support for the problem areas. Planning and conducting bridge inspections and analyzing and scheduling priority repairs and funding opportunities. In coordination with the Corps of Engineers, planning and managing a $13 million effort at Deal Island to dredge the Lower Wicomico River using a nine mile pipeline to transport 140,000 cubic yards of dredge material to restoring eroded wetlands and to help sustain and bring back wildlife and plant species, as well as supporting passage of cargo ships headed to key ports in the region. In addition to this very set of highly technical duties, the engineering division represents Wicomico County in interfacing and partnering with such agencies and organizations such as the Delmarva Water Transport Committee, the APWA, the National Bridge Inspection Standards Program, the Maryland Transit Administration and MDOT, the Corps of Engineers, DNR and DENREC, the U.S. Coast Guard, the Maryland Department of Ag and the USDA, as well as the Association of Floodplain Managers, just to name a few. The county's engineering group is responsive and provides direct technical support as well as guided access to supplementary service when necessary. In short, it's been my privilege to lead the three divisions of professional employees that are absolutely essential to the county's efforts to meet the needs of its citizens. During my brief tenure in this capacity under the leadership of County Executive Julie Giordano and other members of the executive's team, I look forward to much organizational success for years to come. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Mike, and your leadership in the Public Works Department has been monumental, so, and we are very grateful to have you leading that charge, so thank you so much. 
And continuing with progress and successes, we will now hear an update from Planning and Zoning from our Director of Administration, Bunky Luffman, as our Director of Planning and Zoning, Laura Carter, was unable to join us today. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you, Madam Executive. Uh, the department consists of three business units. Uh, there's building permits and inspections, which we call BPI. There's uh, geographical GIS systems, which is commonly known as GIS, and then there's planning services. So I'll give um, some highlights from each. Uh, BPI unit continued to its mission to modernize and streamline the permitting process. Uh, when we first, uh, when the executive first came in, we, we heard a lot of comments about this where the permits sort of weren't getting out the, the door. So they've done a really good job at uh, streamlining the process. And also part of that is they are now fully staffed. Planning and zoning is totally fully staffed. It's something we're really uh, proud of that's also helped us. So we've had efficiency and we also have um, the uh, department as a whole fully staffed. Uh, this division is also committed to, they created a customer bill of rights. And why that's really important is when you come in, you get to see the customer bill of rights sign and it sort of shows you that we proactively will say, if you're looking for X permit, we'll say, well, this is the check checklist you need to go through. If you have questions, we answer the questions um, quickly. We set a uh, time expectation because sometimes a permit you can't get in five minutes. So our department sets the expectation. That way if you come in in the morning and we say the permit's going to take, you know, till tomorrow, you, you don't come back in in the afternoon, sort of waste your time. We set the correct expectation. Um, the building permit reviews are generally completed and 48 to 72 hours, it just really depends upon the uh, project type and the coordination that we have to do as a county with other agencies. And here's uh, some data. Building permits for issued in calendar year 2023, we had 561 permits valued at a little over $59.5 million plus 198 uh, plumbing permits. We, they also handle uh, nuisance uh, responses, and so we have 340 violations, 25 and 25 housing notices in 2023. And I have to say that is headed up by one person. So the, he covers the whole entire county, and he does a uh, great job at that. And that is um, usually that's complaint driven. So we don't we don't have a bunch of people riding around to see where there's um, issues. Uh, it's complaint driven, and he does a wonderful job blanketing this county and following up. and And what we try to do with that is, if there is an issue, we try to work with the homeowner. Hey, this is an issue. Can you correct it? We're not coming in um, to penalize anyone or to do a gotcha or anything like that. We are trying our level best to work with the residents on whatever issues they may have. The GIS uh, unit. Um, continues to support emergency services department who you're here from uh, later in developing next gen uh, 911 emergency response system they also of course do mapping uh, the staff there continue to create interactive maps for public uh, to use on a variety of different purposes and we currently have 13 of those maps Finally, uh, planning services, uh, one of the things, and I wish Councilman Hastings was still here because he'd like this. During 2023, uh, staff processed four new applications for submittal to the Maryland Department of Agriculture Land Preservation Foundation, which is commonly in Annapolis known as MALF. They have an acronym for everything there. All four of those applications sub subsequently received uh, offers from the state. In addition, there are 11 applications from previous years also received uh, state offers in calendar year 2023. So all combined, there were 15 properties and um, that were awarded and they will preserve more than 1,400 acres of farmland in the county in perpetuity. So that is incredibly important for a rural county to sort of save our, our farmland. Um, in, in county, uh, I'm sorry, in calendar year 2023, planning services also completed the community development block grant. It's something that we apply for every year and we rewarded an amount of $320,000. That funding assists low to moderate income homeowners with uh, home repairs, septic and well installations. In addition, we partnered with Chesapeake Housing Mission to fund ramps for 17 homeowners with mobility issues and difficulty getting in and out of their homes. And you can imagine what how that could change someone's life that if they couldn't get in and out of their home and the, um, the funding of the ramps is incredibly and vitally important uh, for those folks. Uh, 
as well, the planning service continue to oversee and administer pandemic-related um, assistance to eligible persons. Uh, the total is approximately $24 million over the last four years. Uh, more than $16 million of that was related to rental assistance. And we're really thankful and appreciative of the collaboration that our county's had with several nonprofit housing agencies who helped in the effort. Uh, department in also the department in uh, cooperation with Salisbury Neighborhood Housing uh, continues to provide funds to assist in down payment assistance for home buyers, and the county was awarded nine hundred and forty thousand dollars for Quantico Creek Rural Legacy Program. So the department is fully staffed, increasingly efficient, modernized, and they look forward to continuing to serve uh, the people of Wicomico County. Thank you so much for that update and the highlights from that department are truly amazing accomplishments. So thank you so much. And then moving on to our fourth pillar, uh, public safety. Public safety is still a top concern for citizens, not just across our county, but across the state and the country. Here in Wacomico County, we have the very best protection between the Wacomico County Sheriff's Office and the allied agencies that keep us safe on a daily basis. And as your county executive, I want to emphasize and reiterate that this anti-police rhetoric has to stop. And to echo the words of our state's attorney, our law enforcement officers deserve better, our communities deserve better, but what are we willing to do about it? We all want a safe community for us to enjoy, but part of having a safer community is keeping the very best people to protect it. This year, our team got to be part of the collective bargaining agreement with our Sheriff's Office deputies previously mentioned by Ms. O'Hara. Much of what will be presented in the budget on public safety reflects the collective bargaining agreement. This agreement was done very differently this year and what we had done in the past. The administration sat down with the FOP negotiating team and we talked. We had honest conversation and accomplished a lot without the presence of our attorneys saving taxpayer dollars. And here with us today to talk about the negotiations from the FOP standpoint, as well as other public safety points, is Scott Hamilton, president of the FOP and retired deputy from the county. Thank you, Scott. Madam County Executive, thank you. Uh, as a representative of, of all law enforcement in Wicomico County, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to provide an update on policing this afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, it may surprise you to learn that the Wicomico County Fraternal Order Police Lodge 111 represents over 240 members from seven different agencies, university, town, city, county, state, and federal, while the state FOP represents over 20,000 members. I've had the, uh, the privilege of serving on the Lodge 111 Board of Directors since 2018 and as president since 2020. Although I retired from the Sheriff's Office in 2021, I continue to serve all law enforcement agencies in Wicomico, and I am proud to stand with the men and women who never stop working to keep our county safe. As we witnessed the solar eclipse on Monday, I was reminded of how the misconduct of a few rogue officers and negative press can overshadow the exceptional service provided by law enforcement to our communities each day. Good officers themselves, their tactics, agency procedures, all remain in the crosshairs of scrutiny. All the while, I receive weekly email notifications of another law enforcement officer who's been killed in the line of duty. Last year, 136 officers nationwide were killed, and so far this year, we've lost 34. Contributed by a small percentage of the population who continue the hatred toward police and disrupt the quality of life most want to enjoy. To be clear, no one hates a bad police officer more than a good police officer. These facts combined with efforts from some legislators to restrict the ability to police effectively have led to massive turnover rates. We are losing officers faster than we can replace them. Consequently, departments are now attempting to outdo one another with huge incentives and sign-on bonuses to attract qualified applicants from an ever-shrinking pool of those who want a career in law enforcement. When I applied to the Sheriff's Office in 1999, I competed for one of 13 positions against 300 people. Today, we're lucky to have five people apply for five positions. Gone are the days of updated equipment and take-home cars used to attract applicants. Larger starting salaries and better benefits packages have become the new framework vital to recruitment and retention. 
Despite these challenges, the fact that e in the fact that each agency in our county has multiple vacancies they cannot fill, public safety here is strong. Each day, officers from jurisdictions that I mentioned before continue to work tirelessly toward one common goal, a safe Wicomico. Often I hear officers talk about calls that, impa calls that impact them in one way or another, whether it was helping a motorist on the roadside, interacting with the public at a community event, or arresting a child predator. Each time we help someone through their time in need, we're reminded of why we decided to serve in the first place. Knowing that our Wicomico community supports law enforcement is a true blessing. We strive to provide the best for every resident and visitor and we, as we continue to serve each day without bias. And we appreciate all those who take the time to stop and thank us when the opportunity arises. I'm excited to report that after almost two years, the Salisbury City Police are continuing to develop their first collective bargaining agreement, which should be finalized soon. While last week, the Sheriff's Office Collective Bargaining Committee made considerable progress towards finalizing their 2024 contract. As the County Executive and Mrs. O'Hara mentioned, the Sheriff's Office CBU Committee ne negotiated this contract very differently from previous agreements, when only attorneys were permitted to negotiate on the behalf of the employees. When I served as the chairman of the committee during the last negotiations, we realized that there must be a dialogue between the employer and employee, which was never before considered. Under Mrs. Giordano's direction, she allowed the process to change. Since late last year, the committee has worked directly with the county executive, her staff, and the sheriff's designee during productive discussions. This process is now coming to a close and a draft agreement will be presented to the sheriff's deputies for a vote in the next few days. I'm optimistic that this new contract will help make the sheriff's office an attractive option for those seeking this career path. It includes adjustment in starting salaries, reduces pay compression between ranks, and focuses on the continuing or on those conti excuse me, continuing towards retirement with only a slight impact on the executive's overall budget. After all, each resident in the county deserves a return on their investment in public safety. In conclusion, as a liaison to each public a police agency in Wicomico County, I invite you to contact me with any concerns you, f you feel aren't getting the attention you expect. Together we can work with our county executive, council members, mayors, police chiefs, and the sheriff toward a common goal, a safe Wicomico. Thank you. Thank you, Scott, and thank you so much for your leadership at the FOP, and I appreciate how you always answer your phone. Even if you're flying a helicopter, you answer your phone for me, and I feel that working relationship between the executive and the FOP just has significantly improved over the, over the last year, and so I look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you so much, Julie. Yeah. So continuing on the topic of public safety, I would also like to mention an amazing bill that was able to be signed into law giving a property tax credit to qualifying members of our volunteer fire departments and ladies auxiliary to help with recruitment and retainment. And one of our departments who works with all public safety entities in the county is our emergency services department. And we will now hear an update from our deputy director of emergency services, Chris Hopkins. Thank you, Madam Executive. The Wicomico County Department of Emergency Services is made up of three divisions. The Radio Division, the Communications Division, otherwise known as 911, and the Emergency Management Division. Each division has its own function, which meshes with the other, and it's to make a complete multifunctional operation. The Radio Division supplies radios and fluent communication within our county. They maintain radios, for example, fire and EMS units, law enforcement, and in the county to include the Sheriff's Department, Salisbury Police Department, Fruitland Police Department, and Pittsville Police Department. Also the Wicomico County Board of Education, Wicomico County Department of Corrections, County Roads, Parks and Recs, to just name a few. The radio system covers Wicomico County and into adjacent counties. This system contains several mobile and portable radios and several towers. The Communications Division, better known as Central or the 911 Center. They are the PSAP for Wicomico County. This means that they take the 911 calls for the county and then transfer to all law enforcement calls to the proper police agency and keep other calls to dispatch fire, EMS, and rescue. The 911 Center, along with other divisions, strive to assist our citizens and provide excellent customer service. We are able to provide CPR, childbirth instructions, along with several other emergency directions to assist with any type of emergency that's reported to our center. In 2023, 
The 911 center received 153,641 phone calls and dispatched 36,652 fire, EMS, and rescue emergencies. The Emergency Management Division. This division handles planning, hazmat, safety, and risk management. They all work together to plan for weather events, sheltering, warming, and cooling stations, and assist with the mitigation and any safety concerns around the county. This is all done with assistance from outside agencies, including Red Cross, Maryland Department of Emergency Management, the Board of Education, Department of Homeland Security, the Health Department, Parks and Rec, and the CERT, which is the Community Emergency Response Team. To cover some things that we have accomplished and in the near future, we are implementing a AED public access station. In partnership with our department, Parks and Rec, and others, we are starting to place AEDs in the county parks. These stations will call 911 when activated, take a photo once the door is open, and they are climate controlled and ultimately allow early defibrillation for any type of sudden cardiac arrest. And we'll have a lot more to come on that. Um, in FY25, with the assistance from the State Numbers Board, we are refreshing all the 911 phones for our PSAP and all law enforcement dispatch centers. We have also moved forward with the ability to COOP, which is the continuity of operation, our 911 system as a whole. This allows us to answer and process and dispatch any 911 call anywhere in the county. And last but not least, the Communications Division has changed their work schedule to a 24-hour and 72-hour shift. This means that the 24 hours, this means they work 24 hours and then off for three, which is 72 hours. The purpose for this change was retention and recruitment. Since this has occurred, we have seen healthier employees with positive feedback. They're able to spend more time with their families and have been... I'm sorry, and has benefited their sleep habits. At this time, we are at one of the highest points with our staffing. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you so much, Chris. And as the deputy director, uh, you have shown such tremendous leadership in emergency services. So we thank really you. appreciate you. And lastly, we are excited to announce that our brand new sheriff's office will hopefully be completed by the end of summer. And we are looking forward to a state-of-the-art facility uh, being the new home for the Wacomico County Sheriff's Office. And then moving on, the fifth pillar, education. Educating our youth and providing opportunities for citizens of all ages is a vital piece of success within a community. And as it stands today, I am proud to say that Wacomico County provides the school system $7 million above the state required amount for the implementation of the blueprint. What this tells me is that we in Wacomico County are already on the right path to the state requirements. We also recognize that education is a top priority of our citizens, especially when it comes to the conditions of our school facilities. In saying that, I would personally like to give a huge shout out to Mrs. Christensen's second grade class at Fruitland Primary for taking the time to write me letters expressing why they would like a new school. And today, I am proud to say that we have included the funding in the budget for Fruitland Primary. So thank you to all the citizens, the school administrators, the teachers, the parents, for supporting that use of taxpayer dollars. And also in the budget, we were able to fully fund the ask of Warwick Community College, especially after the detrimental cut that was made to community colleges across the state. We understand the valuable foundation and continuing education that Warwick provides for students from young adults to senior citizens. And our last pillar, making Wacomico County more business friendly. Over the last year, we have been able to secure a new developer here at St. John with St. John's Properties. Andrew Rout, who regionally uh, represents St. John's Properties, recently stated, what we have done in Wacomico County in two months would have taken us five years in Prince George's County. And we continue to strive for excellence as we watch our county grow. Also, over this last year, we have spent a lot of time listening to our small business owners and asking them, what can we do as an administration to help fulfill this pillar, which leads me to our session in Annapolis. Our Wacomico team was very active in Annapolis this session. 
We testified on two bills, one in particular that will change Wacomico County starting July 1st forever. Both bills have passed the House and the Senate and is now just awaiting the signature from the governor. And it will now uh, be permitted for our restaurant owners to purchase their spirits from their distributor of choice rather than only from our dispensary. The liquor dispensaries will stay open for consumers like you and I, and for you and I, nothing changes. But it, this is a huge step for our restaurant owners, ending a 90-plus year monopoly in liquor in our county. My administration, my administration also wrote letters of support and opposition for various bills, including those that particularly affected public safety, our first responders, and our Second Amendment. And lastly, I would be remiss to not give a huge thank you to our entire Eastern Shore delegation, but especially to Delegate Carl Anderton, following his lead in Annapolis, forming great working relationships. We were also able to secure $59.4 million for Salisbury University for the Blackwell Hall renovation, $1.1 million to start the work for the Mason-Dixon complex in Del Mar, $250,000 for the Humane Society, $21,000 for Main Street Gym, $125,000 for the Eastern Shore Baseball Museum at the Shorebird Stadium, $900,000 for a new video board at the Shorebird Stadium, $50,000 for the Parsonsburg Fire Company Community Center, and $20,000 for the Del Mar Fire Department, and lastly, $75,000 for the Christian Shelter Life Skill House. We did good in Annapolis. We were really excited and we had a great session. In closing, I just want to say thank you again to this amazing team of people. I would also like to thank the citizens of Wacomico County for giving me this opportunity to be your county executive. I know that this state of the county is not the traditional approach, but again, I wanted to showcase the amazing people that we have here in this county and the amazing things that we are doing on a daily basis. I look forward to the for I'm sorry, I look forward to the next two and a half years because the best is yet to come. So thank you, Wakamako, and I hope you all have a fantastic day.